The Lord is good. Thanks for another time. Thanks for two of you. I'm glad y'all are here tonight. We are blessed. The Lord's with us. And uh, thanks for another day. Praise the Lord. Um, got church coming up Sunday. Um, there is a pretty good chance um, Gideon's will be here Sunday. It's their Sunday of the year. Um, I want to support Gideon's. I think they do a great job. And uh, so we'll probably have a speaker come out Sunday and everything. Keep them in your prayers and everything. Um, and uh, keep the church in your prayers and all that we're doing here. And uh, it's a blessing. So it's a blessing. And again, praise the Lord. Um, do that prayer request. I got a prayer request before I came out here. I, uh, I've got family up in uh, Pennsylvania. Um, their football coach had to drive by. Their house. Uh, football coach is okay, but uh, they, um, you know, it's like keep, keep the coach in prayer. It's a, a Salenco High School up there in uh, Portland and uh, Pennsylvania. But uh, got cousins up there and everything, and they, they was like, please pray for us and everything. And, um, so please do that. Pray for Israel and all that mess going on. Pray for our nation. Um, it's just dark times as far as. Um, a lot of a lot of things, a lot of darks, but we uh, we know Jesus Christ is light of the world, and we will overcome. And the victory is with Him and those that follow Him. So we are victorious. But again, we need to pray for our nation, pray for our town, county, and state. Uh, pray for Cousin Wes. Ask prayers for him. My dear bride, not here tonight. Asking prayers for her and uh, her work situation, especially and just. Um, pray for family too. Pray for Jenny and Jared that couldn't make it tonight. Um, Jared's out on the east uh, side of the state. Asking prayers for him. Um, anybody else got a prayer request tonight? The girl that was my administrative assistant in dialysis for 10 years, her name is Tanya Richardson, hit on the collision Sunday night. She was married to flight it out, so can her son be part too? So remember him. Hmm. Yes. Please remember that. Anybody else to see? And I got a friend in the hospital just health issues. Just ask prayer for him. Yes. Um, remember the rest of your family and all that they're going through. I know that uh, they're still desiring your prayers. Um anybody else to see? Remember all the church family, all the kids especially, all that's going on there. Um, pray for the Cherry Lane folks that, you know, we're working with on this church. And ask the blessings there. There's revivals this week. Asking God to bless those revivals. And uh, may, may uh, grow the kingdom. Anybody else? Any unspoken on this evening? Well, let's pray tonight. Lord Jesus, we love and praise you. You're so good to us, Lord. Forget to keep God direct us, help us, Jesus, to do what we only do be for you, Lord God. Ask the Lord to bless these prayer requests. Lord God, there's a need of protection, a need of healing, a need of strength and wisdom, a need of guidance. Lord God, we need salvation, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we need your grace and mercy, Lord God, and all that we do. Lord God, I ask you tonight, Lord Jesus, bless this service, bless this time, bless this gathering, Lord God. Help us come together one mind, one accord. We love and worship you in thy name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, let's sing 120. Let's sing 120.
on something I've already talked about. The title is A Reminder to Pray. That's the name of the sermon. A Reminder to Pray. And I got this together. This uh, I worked on this sermon this morning and uh, I was bringing these verses together and everything and I was sitting there thinking to myself, if I want to encourage people to pray, it, it's just been on my heart and mind and, and I saw a verse and it just like it kind of drove it home and the first, the, the, it's James 5, 15, where we're starting, and that was really what drove us home. Um, Lord Jesus, again, bless, sir, bless time. We love you, Jesus. Amen. James 5, 15, and it states, And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Now, you talk about power right there. The power of a sincere prayer. It says what? The prayer of faith. That is a prayer that, Lord, I'm putting my hope, I'm putting my beliefs, I'm putting my destiny, my future, I'm putting all that I have, Lord God, and I want your hands on it, and I want it to be directed of you. And Jesus, I want you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Praise God. And it's the prayer of faith. And what happens Morning, when we have the prayer of faith, it shall save the sick. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not going to mention names. Not going to mention names. But it was a few months back. It was a few months back. I had a, 
a friend of mine who is now grandma contact me and worried about their daughter wasn't doing so well in their giving of a new baby. And we prayed. And I told that grandma, it's going to be okay because I felt in my heart and spirit. It's going to be okay. And the grandmama was like, you don't know what's going on. You know, I can just tell by the way she was saying. She worked. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Am I saying goody goody Tim? No, I'm not saying goody goody Tim. What am I saying now? I'm saying, Kim, when you have a prayer of faith, when you're constantly in connection with Jesus, Jesus gets some, he'll, he'll put that spirit in you. He'll give you that confirmation. He'll give you that, guess what? I'm with you. He'll give you that, 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 that ability to say, you know what? It, this will work out. I don't know how it's going to work out. And it's just like someone sitting there telling you, it's like giving you directions to going to a new place. I don't know where I'm going. I'm driving this car. But I got someone in my ear telling me to turn left, turn right, head down this road, go this way. Kind of like a spiritual GPS. But I mean, you know, give me all the good glories and telling me, do this, say that, act this way, reach out to that person. And it all comes with the prayer of faith. What did the prayer of faith do in James 5? It shall save the sick. Hallelujah. And if you think about how generic those words are, James, save the sick. Right. Well, if my sins are burdening my soul, my soul is sick. Right. If I'm physically ill, I need a physical healing. I am physically sick. I could be emotionally sick. I could be sick in a lot of other realms, in a lot of other ways. But what is the word saying? It's the prayer of faith going to save the sick. Save them. And what will the Lord do? The Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. I love that raise up part. John, I like that raising up. Because have you ever been raised up? Have you ever been picked? Have you ever been called out that this person did good? This person's strong. This person can lead us. This person is on the right track. You're getting raised up. You're getting called out. And here he is. The scriptures are saying that the Lord himself is going to raise you up. Hallelujah. And if you committed sins, guess what? They're forgiven. Hallelujah. Woo! Praise God. That's that land book of life. Praise God. That's that justification. That is that I'm in the family of the Lord. I'm in his family. I'm one of his. I'm one of his. Trust me, I've acted out. I didn't lose my family when I was acting out. I still part of the family. They might be like, I wish he'd go away. <laughs> <laughs> he can shut up now. <laughs> Poor Sarah. We pulled up beside the we pulled up beside the Walgreens. Going to church, coming back from church, she had picking up medication. And I'm sitting there, and she got the window down, and she's like, yeah, I'm here to pick up my prescription. And your loud mouth preacher was like, make sure you get your meds. <laughs> <laughs> now, the love of my life has looked at me in many ways. <laughs> that was one she could keep. <laughs> I can just hear the words, shut up, <laughs> coming right out of my eyeballs. She didn't have to say a word. I'm sitting there. <laughs> we do those things. We act silly. Sometimes we say things we shouldn't say. Sometimes we act in the way that we shouldn't act. Mm -hmm. But what happens when you get called out by the Lord? What happens when you're raised up? He says you're forgiven. We're forgiven, Donna. Hallelujah. We're forgiven. He knows how we're going to act. He knows we flesh. He knows we're crazy some days. He knows those things. But he's like, that, that's still my daughter. That's still my son. I'll deal with them. If they're acting out, I'll deal with them. He deals with me. Yeah, he deals with us all, I hope. Okay. Because there's times I've been convicted. Sometimes you need to apologize. Sometimes like you really need to back out of what you're doing. You need to stop watching that. You need to stop looking at that. You need to stop listening to that. Okay? 
you'll be forgiven. Hallelujah. Thank you for forgiveness, Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 18. I've preached 1 Thessalonians 5 a bunch in my life. It's one of my favorite chapters. But the 16th through the 18th verse, it talks about, it's a reminder. It's a reminder. We are to what? Two words, rejoice evermore. We are to rejoice. Hallelujah. You want a reason to rejoice, you're on your way to heaven. You want a reason to rejoice, you're forgiven. You want a reason to rejoice, you ain't going to hell. You're saved. Hallelujah. You want a reason to rejoice, praise God. You've got the great I am. He's with you. We've got reasons to rejoice. The bank account might not be what we want. The doctor might not say what we want to hear. Our friends and family may not be the friends and family that we want to be. Sometimes we get hurt. Sometimes we get mistreated. Sometimes we get led to forget about it. That happens. It has nothing to do with my status of salvation. It has nothing to do with my status of the Lord. And the whole time Jesus is saying, rejoice. Rejoice. And you know why I think about those terms of rejoice? I can think about it, Kim. I can think about it. I can see right now. Be like that rich man and that beggar. And it's like that rich man, he was, he was dying. And he was begging someone just take a drip of water to his tongue. Had all that pulled out there. Had it all pulled out. And I want us to think about our individual lives. Sometimes things ain't the way we want them to be. But you know what? Praise God. We got the Lord on our side. And we're heaven bound. Mm -hmm. And he's telling us, rejoice. 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 You can overcome. People tell you, if you smile, they'll wonder what you're thinking about. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just smile at it. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. Pray without ceasing. Oh, my. People talk about that. Should you be on your hands and knees just begging God all the time about stuff? That ain't what they're saying. That ain't what they're saying. You know, I've been James' brother all my life. All my life, we've been brothers. Minus nine years and 50 weeks, I've been his brother. Okay? So it's not been all his life. But all my life, we've been brothers. What am I saying tonight? What I'm saying is, is no matter what's happened, we've lived far apart, we've lived together, we've been on good terms, we've been on not so good terms, we've had whatever. We still brothers. Yeah. That never changed. Yeah. And see, that's what that pray without ceasing is all about. I've got the Lord on my heart. I've got the Lord on my mind. I got him right here. And I can talk to him and walk with him and get and, and get near him anytime. And that pray without ceasing is that open communication. Lord, I just mm, help me to do this right today. Help me to decide this way. Help me, Lord Jesus, to go into this. Help me to have the right words. Help me to think the right thoughts. Help me to, to sing the right song. Help me to start playing piano because Pastor Tim wants me to. Hallelujah. I know what I'm praying all week long. All week long. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Love y'all. She's either ignoring me or she ain't listening. I don't know. I'll find out later. She knows I love her. Praise God. But sincerely, honestly, there are things, and Morgan, and, and going back, there's not a person in this church I can't ask to do something or want something from them. There's nobody in here. And I got a good feeling that's the same this way. There's things that you want of me or would wish I would do differently or say or be whatever, okay? That's the relationship. That's the, the connections that we have. And see, that's part of the praying without ceasing. You see, when you and I pray without ceasing, we're constantly in communication with God. God, how would you have me to be? What would you have me to be? How would you have me to act to do me and say? And then we can take that attitude to others. To others. And Lord, 
my friends, my family, they need help, they need prayer. Uh, God give them guidance, God give them direction, God inspire them, God bless them. And at the same time, y'all can do the very same thing to me. Because the same God's connected to you guys. Lord bless the brother Tim. Hey, if y'all need somebody to pray for, please pray for me. I, I, I'll take it all. I'll take all your prayers. I will. I will. I'm a hog. Okay? I'll take it all. I want your prayers. We go on. And in the uh, 18th, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. We are to be thankful. You know why being thankful is so important? Being thankful is so important because, one, if I'm thankful, then I have to know where my blessings come from. Right. Okay? Good sweet Donna bakes me a cake. If I go over to John and say, John, I appreciate that cake. I'm a, I'm a little bit lost in the translation there, right? Eh? You see? You give thanks. Lord, I thank you for this blessing today. Lord, I thank you for helping me. Lord, I thank you for salvation. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for, for all that you've given me. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for another time, another opportunity to praise and worship you, Jesus. Lord, I'm able enough to walk and talk. Praise God. Got a vehicle come on out here. Got, got wonderful people coming out worshiping with me tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's, that's, that's the thankfulness. Another important reason to be thankful is if we can remain thankful, then our mind's in a good spot. You ever been around someone that is never thankful? They always wanting, or they always complaining, or they always griping. Or it's always negative. I mean, it, it don't, I'm like, oh man, get away from me. Get away from me. We got a good day. We're blessed today. I talk about seasons. People come to the library. And I'm like, I want seasons. I do want seasons. I'm not crazy about summer heat. Okay. But we need it. It's important. We need specific seasons. Not everybody likes cool weather. Not everybody likes a breeze. I like a little breeze outside. I like that breeze. Okay? That ain't everybody. You see? And what I'm saying is, if we can be thankful for the things around us, we go along, get along, and we can, we're easier to deal with. We're easier to talk to. Right. If someone's constantly in a bad or negative mood, I don't want to deal talk with them. <laughs> but if I'm thankful, if i got a good spirit, if I've got some joy and hope, That'll draw people. That'll draw people. I've had people tell me, it's like, I like being around you because of ABC. And it's about happiness, joy. You got a lot. There's, there's a love there. Jesus gets all the glory. Okay? Jesus gets all the glory. But I'm just saying, be that person. Be that light. Be that solid word. Prove the 78% of the people that, that I know right, okay? And then 22 other people, well, they see me on the wrong day or they just, you know, well, whatever. And I'm still in the, he's still working on me part. <laughs> True. There's some people I still need help with and deal with. Help me, Jesus. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Now, this is why we need faith. It says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. That's a faith walk, folks. Philippians 4 and the 6th verse, it says, be careful for nothing. I don't know what you're worried about. I don't know what you're concerned about. I don't know your trials. I don't know your sorrows. I don't know your heartaches. But I know the one who can overcome those things, and that is Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's go to the cross. Let's cry out to him. Be careful for nothing. Lord, I know you're with me. I know you lead me, you guide me, you bless me, you'll touch me, you'll help me. Praise God. You're there. He's there. Be careful for nothing. But what does it say? It says in everything by prayer and supplication. Everything. You ever, you ever try to hide something from people? Whew. Mercy. That don't always work out. That don't always work out. You see? But we can't hide anything from God. 
So since he already knows it, why don't we in everything by prayer? Lord, you know what I have trouble with. You know what I struggle with. You know the things that tempt me. You know the things that, Lord, get me off kilter. Lord, you know these things. And then it's at that point. Now this is this is this is the the, the, the this is what comes back to us. Are we willing to listen to what the Lord has us to do and say? You see? The Lord might be, you need to read the Bible more. You need to pray more. You need to stay away from this bunch. You need to keep your nose out of this thing. You see? And then it's up to us to follow the lead of the Spirit. And when you and I follow his lead, it's going to go well. You'll be blessed. It's when we don't. W-E, that's me and you. When we don't do those things, hmm, we've got to go back and talk to the teacher. You know, it's like uh, I talk about sports a lot, I know. But it's like a good coach. It's like, this is what we're going to run. This is the play. Okay? You two go that way. You two go that way. You come over here. I'm going to back up. You head that way. All right, we're going to do that on a two. And then when whoever got the ball says two, you guys go that way, you guys go this way, I go that way. But whoa! Y'all aren't doing right. Let's back up. And that's what Jesus does. Jesus is like, listen, we need to do this again. I told you to pray for those people. I told you to love people. I told you to proclaim the name of the Lord. I told you to be holy for I'm holy. All right, let's try it again. Woo! Amen. Help us, Lord. Philippians 4 to 7, verse, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Have you ever had a situation in your life you're like, I don't know how we're going to get through this, but I've got a peace, I've got a strength, I've got a joy. I know God will get me through this. And that's why we pray without ceasing. You see? That's why we give thanks because it keeps us in a constant connection with the Lord. Lord, I want to be near you. Lord, I want to praise you. I want to thank you. I want to worship you. I want to honor you, Jesus. Lord, you're good to me. So I'm close to the Heavenly Father. So when those rough times come in, And the Bible tells us that we would have trials and tribulations. That's in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So when those trials and tribulations show up, if we're close to the Father, you see what I'm saying? Woo! We're going to get through this thing a lot easier than if we're way over yonder somewhere thinking we know the answers, we know what to do, we know how to say it, act. We'll we'll take care of it, just me, myself, and I. That's where you wind up in the trouble. That's where you wind up in the ditch. That's where the heartaches come. That's when it's like, I should have I should have stayed close to the father. It's like the prodigal son. I should have never left the daddy's house. I should have never left. Look what I had, and now look what I've got. I think I'll go back to the father. I think I'll go back to the father's house. Hallelujah. It says in the peace of God. Hallelujah. Thank you tonight for the peace of God. Love you, Jesus. It's the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We look on last section of scripture tonight. Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4 tonight. 14 through 16. 14 through 16. Hebrews 4. 14 through 16. It says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest, that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. Hallelujah. Let us hold fast. He saved my soul. He's my redeemer. He is the great I am. The 15th verse says, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore, the 16th verse, Hebrews 4, 16, Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hear that tonight. We have a great high priest who is in heaven, Jesus, the Son of God. We are to hold, hold fast to our profession. I'm saved. 
I'm blessed. I'm forgiven. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm in the land for the life. Hallelujah. I'm a child of the king. Praise God. I'm a joint heir. Hallelujah. I'm blessed tonight. Praise God. We hold fast to those professions. We hold fast to those, those commitments. We hold fast to those statements. Praise God. I'm one of his and he's, praise God, he's blessing me. He's keeping me. He's holding me. He's helping me. He's guiding me. He's loving me tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we can hold on to that. And it's Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our profession. And it says right there, we don't have a high priest. We don't have someone that cannot be touched. But what does it say? But was but it says there that was an all points tempted, like as we are yet without sin. That means Kim, he's done done. He went through all the things we went through. But he was perfect. Because it was that God made flesh. It was that God part of him. He made it all the way through. It was perfect. It was a spotless lamb of God. Hallelujah. It was a perfect sacrifice. And see, he understands when we get tempted. He understands when we get aggravated. He understands our anxieties. He understands our fears. He understands those temptations. He understands those troubles and trials. He understands the struggles. And that's why we hold fast our profession. Praise God. God, I know you've been through this. Lord, I know you can get me through this. Lord, I know you'll give me the strength. Lord, I know you'll give me, Lord, the power. Lord God, I know you will deliver me out of this situation. Lord Jesus, tonight, hallelujah. He's the Lord of Lords, King of Kings. He's the great I am. And he's with us tonight. I want you to listen to this. Please hear this. And I want you to think about how simple this is. How simple. I can stand here tonight. my prayers. He'll guide me out of the darkness. He'll strengthen me when I'm weak. He'll touch and heal my infirmities. He'll guide me in high places. He'll lead me in roads of righteousness. He'll take me to the still waters. Praise God. He'll calm my soul. He'll give me peace. And I think about those thoughts. And I just feel so connected to Jesus. And I feel so connected to the Word. And I feel so connected to the Spirit. And I feel so connected to who He is. And it just reminds me, John, what this is all about. It's all about the one that spoke light. That looked down on this earth and was saying, there has to be a sacrifice to cover the sins. And I'm going to send the sacrifice. And now it's up to us. We have free will. Will you choose to serve the Lord? Will you choose salvation? Will you choose to follow? Take up your cross and follow him. Will you take on his burden? His yoke is easy. The burden is light. When you compare it to taking on the world by yourself. We've got someone that will help. We've got someone that will bless. We've got someone, praise God, who will hold our hands, will strengthen us. Pick us up when we fall down. Give us strength. Give us courage. Give us wisdom. Give us purpose. We're blessed tonight. Let us therefore, that 16th verse, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let's pray tonight. Lord Jesus.